Hi guys, welcome. Welcome to Prelims Affairs, where we discuss issues from Prelims perspective. Today, let us discuss the concept of income inequality. The reason why it is in news is because SBI had a research where it showed that income inequality in India, in India is declining. Whereas Oxfam report says that the income inequality in India is increasing. So income inequality as a concept is been in use. And now let us look at it from prelims perspective and not from means perspective. If you take income inequality, the single most important statistical measure for income inequality is the Gini coefficient. If you observe the Gini coefficient properly, you have along the x-axis the percentage of population and along the y-axis the income. All right. Now, what is Gini coefficient? It is a statistical measure that measures the income or economic inequality among population within a country or between different countries. It basically measures the dispersion of wealth or income across the population within a country. Now, if you look at the diagram, the Gini coefficient, if it is zero, then it shows that it is perfect equality. And if it is at one, it shows that it is perfect inequality. Now, it can also, sometimes the coefficient can also exceed one, which signifies negative wealth or negative income. However, 0 0.40 is the indicator of high income inequality of Gini coefficient. Now, if you also observe the Gini coefficient, you're seeing something called Lorenz curve. Now, if you observe the Lorenz curve, Lorenz curve is a graphical representation of income inequality. And this Lorenz curve will always be convex shaped. The reason why it will be convex shaped because the proportion of population having low or middle income will always be greater and the proportion of population having high income will always be lesser. Hence, Lorentz curve will always be convex shaped. So I hope you understood what is Gini coefficient and you understood what is this Lorentz curve. Now, because we have discussed about Lorentz curve, let me also just give a brief uh, you know, idea about different curves that comes across your economy syllabus. The next curve that you should have an idea about is Phillips curve. Phillips curve is basically a graphical representation of the inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment rate. Higher the inflation, lower will be the unemployment rate. That is the graphical representation of Phillips curve. The next is Laffer's curve. Laffer's curve is a relationship between tax rates and government revenue. Now, if you see the Laffer's curve, Laffer's curve is an inverted U-shaped graphical representation. The inverted U-shape is because if the tax rates are at 0%, the government revenue is zero. If the tax rates are increased to 100%, even then the revenue is zero. That's why Laffer's curve always shows an inverted U-shape. However, what is important is it gives us the relationship between the tax rates and the government revenue. The last curve is Rand's curve. Rand's curve provides relationship between the government spending and the economic performance. And as you can see, the government spending cannot be in, uh, definitely increased to increase the economic performance because there comes a point where the economic performance will drop with the increase in government spending, which signifies that there is crowding out effect. So basically, Rand's curve is used to assess the optimal growth of the economy by government spending and to not do more than that. So basically, these are the other curves that you should know from the economy perspective, especially for prelims. So I hope you understood the concepts well. I'll be back with some more concepts, guys. Thank you so much. Bye.